On this final episode of the year of the Ask Gary V Show, I talk about the Jets, Scooter Braun, and cloning myself. You ask questions and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. This is Gary Vay Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 58 of the Ask Gary V Show. Before we get into the questions, this will be the last episode of the year because tomorrow I go away with my family, two weeks off the grid. Super excited. Actually, no, I just told Steve. Fortunately, I couldn't finish everything. This is Ultimate Hustle Monday while in Mexico, the way Steve says it. Uh, I will have to do some hours of work, but in the Gary V Show world, 58, that's what we got under the uh, under the gun in 2014. It was a good run. We started when? September? Help me. August. When? August, thanks. T-Rock, not bad. Did a nice job, got a nice number. That's actually gonna be the question of the day. What is your prediction for the amount of shows we execute in 2015? We'll make this like the almond thing. If anybody gets it right, actually, no, 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 I'm not doing that. It's not gonna be that hard. Somebody would definitely get it right, so I'm not doing anything. That is not the question of the day. Let's go into the show. Acos asks, when you're working on a project with clients, how much is done online, like Skype, versus in-person meetings? Acos, I, I can't speak for the whole you know, Vayner Media team, and I think they're all individual, but at my level, or what I do, not even probably, probably not predicated on my level, just the way I roll, when I think about the client stuff that I do, you know, I would say 10% on text, 40, I'm not, actually, I'm not gonna try to make this round out to 100, let's see. It probably is predominantly email, um, solid amount face-to-face, I'm a big face-to-face kind of fan, almost non-existent phone, and growing because I'm pushing them into more text. Um, so face to face is probably 25%. The rest is digital, no Skype or Google Plus, uh, you know, uh, or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm predominantly face to face. Email is number one, face to face texting. Um, and that's that, no go to meeting, none, none of that stuff. Eric asks Do you watch your own videos? Eric, the answer to this question is no. It was funny, Steve was just going through the questions. D-Rock was like, no, because he, he I, I've never watched a full episode of the Ask Gary V Show or any of the 1,089 wine videos I made, 1,000 Wine Library TV, 89 Daily Grape. Oh, by the way, this is gonna pass Daily Grape at some point pretty soon. That is the fun fact that I've actually had three, I always say I have two shows, it's actually three. Uh, anyway, sorry. Me and Steve nerding a little bit about wine. Uh, uh, the answer is I don't. Um, I've watched some of my video stuff because I'm showing somebody some stuff. As a matter of fact, now that DRock, Stefan are in my life, they make me watch edited things. We have a big new edited video up today. Sorry, DRock, I guess we decided we're launching it today. <laughs> um, so now I have actually seen some of my longer form stuff because I have to like look at it because it's edited, but I know what I do on the show. I'm living it, so no, I don't watch the show. Glenn asks, can you elaborate on what the middle is and why it sucks? Glenn, this is a great question. You know, to me the middle is the commodity work and thinking that everybody else does, meaning, it's what the market's doing right now. Like, it, it's, it's when startups pitch me, we're gonna do something in the photo app space. You mean like everybody's been doing for the last five years? It's, it's commodity work. You know, I think that if you're not trying to break things, you're not doing a good job. Or, back to clouds and dirt, non-middle. If you're not doing like, uh, you know what's so funny? I've sat through four pitches today, and I've liked two, and one is because the two guys are just doing the work. They're like in the weeds. They're not doing the big holistic branding thinking, game changing stuff. They're just executing but at a raw level. I just find that there's not that many hardcore pr- practitioners and there's even less big, where's the world going? You know, what are those trends at the highest level or am I doing the kind of things at the highest level? And so I don't really know how to explain the work but you're surrounded, I'm sorry, I don't really know how to explain the middle but you're surrounded by it 99.9% of your life. Hey Gary, I have a question for you for Ask Gary V. Who cares about that question, Gary? Uh, this is a more important question. 
How are you, if you were the owner of the New York Jets, going to turn around this team and make us a Super Bowl contender? Because we both know that's all that matters. And he's a Giants fan who, who gives a shit what he has to say. Go Giants. Thanks, Brad and Scooter, uh, for the question. You know, I mean, the true answer to the question, because I love, you know, we've, we've decided to go straight on this show. The true answer is I'd go in and audit. That's what I do. So as close as I am working with the Jets as a client, watching every play, staying on top of it, there's still nuances that are just not, you know, known to me. I, you know, I think one thing I would do, for example, if I bought the Jets today, I would mandate from the top, and this would probably make it a little harder to get a GM, and so that's something I'd have to quantify, but I would mandate that we draft a quarterback every two years in the first two rounds of the NFL draft until we had our guy. Right, so like, I, I think it's a quarterback league. The rules go in that way, and you have to reverse engineer the league. And so, for example, right now, I would draft a quarterback in round one or two this year because though I've given Geno the benefit of doubt, he's clearly not the overwhelming. This is Andrew Luck sitting in our pocket, so we have to draft another quarterback. And if it's not politically correct to Geno and his agents, or to the New York media, or the fan base, I wouldn't care because I would dictate to victory. And I think that's the right strategy right now in the NFL. If you do not have a quarterback, first two rounds, you draft. One. You bring him in, if you don't feel good about it I'd, give it, I'd give it 24 months, but after full 24 months, after a second season of that player, by the way, whether he played a snap or not, I would draft another one, and another one, and another one, until I had one, because that is the linchpin. I'd also work on the PR team, I would do a weekly show, uh, live stream show with the fan base so they could pound me with all their angers and I'd pound them back because uh, that's the kind of owner I'd be. Um, I would do a bunch of marketing things. You've heard me in the past. I'd send a jersey of a Jets jersey to every six year old in the tri state area on their sixth birthday. Um, I would probably do a, a ton of inappropriate things at this point. There's, you know, like get into it with the media because I think they're out of their mind with the way they're handling the Jets uh, in this giant city. Um, I would like watch the game from the stands, um, which I think would be an interesting new thing, uh, but that would be tough because I'd curse at opponents and the NFL would try to reel me in. So those are some of the things I'd be doing. Evan asks, if you could clone yourself, would you? Evan, this is a tremendous question and a great one to end the year, especially because I announced that I'm going away with my family for two weeks. This is as easy of a question as they've come. I would 100%, I mean this is the best, I really wish this technology existed because I would take that person, Gary 2, who is actually Gary 2, the cloned version, anyway, I would take the cloned version and I would make that person spend every waking moment with my family. They would sit at home, you guys, what's that? Why is that funny? I just, I thought it was nice. I would send the first one first. What's that? I would send yourself. You oh, I don't care. Keep this, keep this, keep this rolling. By the way, first of all, no, no editing here. No, no, I don't think you understand. The the fact of the matter is, is they're the same person. Are you saying that? No, but listen, maybe that was an insight that we didn't. Maybe, maybe I love my business more than my family. Sorry, this is a tough way to end the show and the year. The bottom line is, sorry that D Rock has become the cynical one, but. <laughs> Steve, the, bat, the torch has been passed. I, I would take the equal version of it and have that person sit at home every minute and be with my family because then I would be able to accomplish the two things that I want at one time. And so that would be the answer. <laughs> the question of the day. How much do you hate D-Rock? <laughs> you keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Hey everybody, welcome to 58. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> we missed one day. You know? Rusty. Finish Rust. the year strong. Oh crap, wait. Subscribe! I need subscriptions because I can't push this many right hooks in social, so subscribe!